Welcome to this walkthrough on Elemental Studio and Elemental Player. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Elemental Studio to build up your own virtual instruments, and then how you can play them back in the player and use them in your DAW. So starting off in Elemental Studio, let's create a new instrument. And I wanna create a synth instrument by using one sample and spreading it across the range of the keyboard. So I'm going to go to Create New Instrument, from there, I can give the instrument a name. I'm just gonna call it Synth1. I can add my publisher details. I'm just gonna add my initials for my name. Over here, you can add a specific feature image that you wanna use the instrument. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this as the default and I'm going to select a color. So as you can see from the preview, you're going to see this image over here and in the featured color here with the name of the instrument and the publisher. And this is under the details section, as you can see here. What I like to do now before I go over to any of the other sections is save the project. Navigate to where you want to save it. I've got this Elemental Studio folder over here. I've got this folder here labeled instruments. This is where I'm going to save it. So I'll give it a name. I'll just call it synth1 and save. So now I've got everything saved. I can move over onto these other tabs. So over here in the sample section is where you can load up the audio files that you want to use to build up your instrument. You've got four different columns here. Here are your sound sets. These can also be considered like articulations where you can load up different sounds and you can switch between them. You can set up your note range, meaning where that sample is gonna span across what notes. You can set different velocity levels. And then finally over here, this is where you're gonna see the sample file that you add in. So starting off, I'm just gonna create a sound set. I'll just call this synth. Then I go to note range, just while that's selected, hit this. I've got an unspecified note range. So what I can do is when I add my sample in, I can add the root notes and then select what the highest and lowest notes are. So I'm gonna skip this over here. Maybe I'm just gonna add a velocity range. Velocity will be from zero to 127, but I could create other velocity ranges here for my samples. And then finally for samples, I'm just gonna click the plus sign and I've got an unspecified sample. So I'm gonna click over here and navigate to where that sample file is. On my desktop, I've got this file here, synth C2. So it is a synth sample, and this is actually the notes, which I'm gonna actually use as the root note for the synth. I'll click open. Okay, so let me just navigate back a bit so we can change some of the settings. So for the root notes, I'm gonna set it to C2. I want my lowest note to be C1, and this can span all the way up to, let's say, C5. For the velocity range, I'll leave it set from zero to one to seven. And then as I click on there, I can see my sample and here's my sample name. And even better, I can loop the sample because my sample, if I just play it back. As you can hear, there's initial transient and then it sustains out. So I'm gonna set the loop mode and what I can do is set where it wants to loop. So maybe I'm gonna say from 0.5 and then 200 over here. So once I'm happy with everything, I can save my instrument. I'll just save it again. And when you're happy with all the settings that you've set up, what you can do then is you can export out your instrument. And from there, I can add the instrument in the player over here and play it out and hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna hit export instrument. I'm gonna to navigate to my folder under this Elemental Studio folder over here. I've got instrument exports and I can export it out and it's going to assign it the same name that I saved the project as. So just remember where you've exported this out. Now let's take a look at how we can use the Elemental Player and use that to load up instruments into our library and play back the instrument that we created. So I'm gonna click the plus sign here. I'm going to navigate to that folder where I've got that exported file. I'll just select this folder and click open. And now I've got my instrument. So on my keyboard here, if you don't hear anything when you're playing back, you can just go to settings. And from here, what you can see is the storage location of where your libraries are stored. And then over here, your audio MIDI settings. So if I click this, I can choose what my output audio device is, the outputs that it's using. I can set the sample rate, the buffer size. So a higher sample rate is gonna have higher fidelity. I can go down or up if I wanted to, just depending on how my audio device handles that. And then with buffer size, if I set a lower buffer size, I'm going to have a lower latency. But for now, I'll just leave it set to 512 samples. 
And then over here on my active MIDI input, so I can use these as MIDI triggers to trigger the MIDI playback of the instrument. This is my default MIDI device here, my launch key MK61. So I'll have that selected and everything is set up here. So now what I can do is when I play back, let me just go to the home screen. I can hear my synth instruments. Now, these are some of the global parameters that you got on the Elemental Player instrument. I can add in some reverb, change the size, give it more width, add some dampening if I want, and test the dry wet mix. I can use the dynamic section to change the gain amount, pan it to the left or right if I want to, and then here I can filter down the velocities. But for now, I'm just gonna leave the velocity range wide open. Next up, there's an envelope filter section. I can change the attack, decay, sustain, and release. So let's say I want a slower attack time. So it's gonna fade in more to that sound. So that's using a single sample and loading it up and throwing it across the whole velocity range and creating an instrument. And using the global parameters here on the elemental player to add in some reverb, change the dynamics and add in an envelope filter. Now next up, I wanna show you how you can batch import audio samples. So maybe you've sampled quite a selection of samples of an instrument and you wanna pull these in and see how to assign them within the elemental core and how you can use them in the player. Let's check this out. So here we are in Elemental Studio again. I'm going to go to the home screen. I'm going to create a new instrument. I'm going to give it a name. What I've done is I've sampled a cello instrument and I'm going to build up a virtual instrument of this cello. What I've done is I've recorded multiple samples with different velocity layers, round robin samples, and also different articulations that I want to use with the sound sets. So starting off, let's give this instrument a name. So I'll call it cello. Publish shall just leave my initials. I'll choose a different color, maybe going for something a bit more green. So it looks like that. I'll save this project. Now going over to the samples. Here I could go in and drag one sample in at a time, but what's even better is to use the batch import. So making sure that you've named your files correctly, it can really help to use this batch import to pull in your samples in one click. What you got here, are file naming structures that you can use to help the Elemental Studio instrument determine the file name and how to assign those. So for example, let's just open my samples up. So over here in samples, I've sampled an instrument. I've got three different articulations in three different folders. I've got pizzicato, staccato, and sustain. And if you see, you've got all these other details. So if I go to pizzicato, here is my articulation name, and this is the root note. This is a velocity tag. So with velocity tags, you can use specific words like soft, hard, and medium, and this will determine the velocity tag, or you can use numbering systems. So I'm using a numbering system to determine the velocity, one being the softest and four being the loudest. And then finally, over here, I've got my round robin. So two different samples for round robining. So if I look at that file structure, it's the name of the sound set, the root note, the velocity tag, and then the round robin. So going over here, let's just set everything accordingly. So I've got sound set as the first name, root note is next. Now I can also use different types of separators to separate the text and the file name. Then there's the velocity tag, and then the round robin. Now these, I just wanna leave blank. So I'm just gonna click on them and just make them blank over here for now. So I'm not using any of these fields. Then I can click import folder. I can navigate to that folder. So it's under samples, bounces, pizzicato. So I'm selecting the folder. I click open. And as you can see, it's made the sound set. Under the sound set, I have the note range going from C1 all the way to C4. So what the application has done is look for the pitch naming info and assign it to the root note. Then under velocity, I've got my four different ranges. You can see where the range lies. So zero to 31 is the first range and this highest range being from 95 to 127. And then as I click that and move over to my samples, you can see my two round robin samples. 
So with one click, I was able to set the sound set, add in all the notes with the note range, the velocities, and the round robining. So as you can see, it really helps to name your files accordingly so that this process works in one click. Now let's do it for Staccato as well. As you can see, I've got the same file name convention over here. I'll click Import Folder, go over to my Staccato, open that, there is my Staccato sound set. I've got my node range, my velocities, and my round robin samples. Now finally, what I wanna show you here is the sustain section. I've got a bit of extra numbers here, and these last two numbers are telling me what the loop starts and end points are because I want the sustain sound to loop out. When I play it back, it's going to have the initial attack, and then it's gonna loop over a section. So I just need to change some settings here. So I've got the sound set, the root note, the velocity tag, the round robin, and then finally over here, I've got the loop start and loop end fields. Now I'm going to import that folder. Now watch here. Now I've got my sustain patch. I can see the note range. I can see the velocity ranges. Then my samples with the round robin. And as I click on it, it has enabled the loop and it's looping from 1.5 seconds to three seconds. So that's great. Now I've built up an instrument with three different sound sets, the pitches for the different nodes, each assigns different samples, a velocity range. And then as well, I've got round robining. And then on the sustain sound set, I've got looping. And what you can also do if you want to, with your sound set selected, you can go down to the icon over here and choose an icon that relates to it. I'm gonna save this project again just to make sure that I've saved all the changes correctly. So I'll go to Instruments and save that as Cello 1. And then I can click Export and navigate to the folder on where I wanna export it. So Instrument Exports over here. And it's going to give it the same name that I saved the project, so Cello. Okay, so now that that's set up, let's jump across to the player and add that library. I'll click add, navigate to that instrument. So I'll go to that same folder, my exports, cello, and open that. Yeah, I can click here to add it to my instruments here. As you can see, it's loading up all these samples that are included in this instrument. Now, if I play back, that's using this sound set here, which is the pizzicato. I can click here and now it'll have the staccato. And if I play softly, and then play hard. As you can see, it's triggering different samples which are set up for the velocity range. And then finally over here, I've got the sustain. And as I said, the sustain is looping. So I've got the initial attack of the sound as I play it. And then it'll loop out, and as I play softer. And it's triggering different velocity ranges. Add in the reverb, add in some size and width. And it really sounds great now. So that's how to create an instrument using multiple samples and using the Elemental Studio to assign the sound set, the note range, the velocity ranges, and the round robining and looping. And that is through using the batch import feature. Now, next up, I wanna show you how you can load up these instruments within your DAW and how you can jump between the different sound sets and even use MIDI control change messages to switch between the sound sets. Now, in your DAW or DAW, you can create an instrument track. So I'm using Studio One, but the same can be done in other DAWs. I'm going to add an instrument track. Then on this instrument track, I'm gonna load up an instance of the Elemental Player. Then from this Elemental Player, I can add an instrument from the library that I've got loaded up here. And if I play back, you can hear sound. And that's using the Pizzicato sound set. So what I could do is switch maybe to Staccato and record in a part. So I've got my metronome armed. I'm just going to play back and record in some MIDI. So there is my staccato part. I could label this track. I'll call it cello staccato. And if I want to use another sound set, then I can add in another instrument, add in another instance of the elemental player, load up the cello instrument, and then choose a different sound set. So maybe I want to use pizzicato here and record something in. So 
So that's a way on how to use the different sound sets. You can create an instrument track and load up a different instance of the sound set. Now, the Elemental player does have a system built in that you can use articulation switching. So it uses MIDI control change message 32, and then you can use numbers up from that that can switch between the different articulations. Now, some DAWs have systems built in where you can set up a switching system. Now, Studio One has this with sound variations. So let me show you how I can set this up. So I'm going to click on this wrench icon over here. Over here, I can create new variations. I'll create a variation one here. Let's assign this to pizzicato. The input note is going to be a note way down that's out of range on my instrument. So a good one is C minus one. Then over here on the top, I can choose to use a controller. The controller is going to be set to CC32 and the data is going to be one. So one is going to trigger the pizzicato. Then I'll have a new articulation. This is going to be staccato. As you can see, the note is going up to C sharp minus one and it's using the second data. And then finally, my third variation is going to be my sustain that's using D minus one and three on the data. And just to show you how this works, I'm just going to make sure that I've got the staccato patch set up. You can see the mini note data over there. Then down over here under the sound variations, I can draw in some changes. So if I click on here, I can choose pizzicato. Maybe over here will be staccato. Here will be sustain and so on, just creating some different articulations. And now when I play back just the track over here, you can see how it's switching articulations because what it's doing is it's using the MIDI CC32 lane and using the extra data set here to switch articulations. So that's how you can load up the Elemental player in your DAW and then set the instruments in the library, as well as how you can change the articulations with CC32. So that gives you a summary on how you can use the Elemental Studio and the Elemental Player. Under the publishing section, you can create a copy protected version of your instrument in the player. So if you do need to do this, you can contact Organic Instruments so that you can have a copy protected instrument. This protects your instrument by encrypting samples and requires your customers to own a license to the instrument before it can open. Now you can also create a contained instrument that is copy protected. If you need to do this, you can contact Organic Instruments and they can use Elemental Core to build you this dedicated application version that you can load up within your DAW. So for example, here I've got my instruments. Here you can see GDH is the instrument and over here is my cello. I can drag this over here, it loads up the instrument. And as you see here, it's a dedicated instrument. I don't have to load it up within the player. So what I can do is I can play back. I'm gonna go for the sustain patch. And I can go in and tweak the settings. So for example, adding some reverb, increasing the width and dry wet mix. So this is a white label product that's been built by Organic Instruments from an exported out Elemental Player Instruments. So that is a walkthrough of the Elemental Suite. You saw how you could build your instrument in Elemental Studio, then how you could load it up in the Elemental Player, plus how you could load it up in your DAW, and as well as how you could export out your instruments and get it built as a dedicated plugin that you can load up in your DAW.